We mentioned you want to be playing your best basketball for Florida, seeking their sixth win in the last seven games against Auburn. Obviously, the Tigers are a team that's on the bubble for the NCAA tournament among the last four in, according to Charlie Cream's latest bracketology. So, Auburn with the basketball, Sidney Shaw trying to make a move. Auburn playing so well right now. You see their starting five down low. The three from Honesty Scott Grayson getting them going. It's Scott Grayson who has led the team so far this season and the number two scorer in all of SCC back the other way. We told you about Matharu. Correa coming off the bench. Faith do one of those seniors along with Zippy Broughton, the freshman. Layla Reynolds and Jariah Warren. Reynolds with the basketball down to Warren. Baseline, not able to get it go to go, but Faith Dude is right there on cleanup duty, making her 143rd career start here at Florida. One of those seniors on the other side for Auburn. Kai Milton, here's Sydney Shaw again, trying to create some separation, but a traveling violation. They are such a hard defensive team, and from the offensive end, when you're going against that, it's hard. So you have to come to your, you have to meet your passes. You got to shorten your passes. You got to be sure about the angle that you take on your drive. Nice angle there, going right with the take with the left hand. Player you want to watch, got to get the hand, the ball in her hand, and the clock goes down. Got to get a shot up before the shot clock expires, and that's a violation and another turnover. For Auburn, Kelly Ray Finley in her third season with the Gators and one who just is a coach who's a player's coach, always seeking the best out of her players and they just really gravitate to her and we saw that as you mentioned in the senior day presentation before the game. I think from a coach's standpoint, you're always just trying to find the best way. Gibby brought to the basket. Yeah, she got the best pass. Oh, I know. Wide open. It's almost like the, the C open for her. <laughs> but taking advantage of a couple of back to back turnovers from Auburn, now Florida on a 6 nothing run here to open in this first quarter. Florida definitely has lost four out of the last five games trying to get on the win. Win column, but honestly, Scott Grayson. Floater, she's the lone Tiger in double figures. Driving baseline, Aliyah Matharu tried to push the issue last touch by the Tigers. And Johnny Harris, boy, what a great job that she has done in her third season on the Plains. And she's got this team in position to potentially make their first NCAA tournament since 2019. I, I mean, when you look at that and you look at when she came in, how every year she had developed this team into her style of play. You know, of course, she came underneath Vic Schaefer, coach at Texas now, but the thing that she has brought, the intensity, the defensive mindset, Auburn's always been a defensive team, but offensively is where they've struggled and they've had players step up. Right now, working on the old boards, getting inside the paint and looking for their best shot. Milton fouled on the way up. Leilani Correa, the one of the top scorers in the SCC coming off the bench. Well, it's been interesting when you watch Leilani Correa, and that's been the story. A lot of us have asked, like, why is she not starting? Correa likes to come off the bench. She wants the opportunity to settle down. And, you know, sometimes when you start the game, the energy is so, the game is going so fast. It allows her the opportunity to see the game before she has to come in and things settle down. And then, I mean, when you're bringing off the score, your sixth man <laughs> comes off the bench scoring the way she scores. That's a great asset to your team. Snatched down the rebound by McKenna Eddings and one. The Juco All-American coming over and playing in her first season at Auburn. And we often hear coaches talk about how Rebounding is about heart and hustle and both ends of the floor. We've seen that demonstrated, especially the way they've hit the offensive glass now Both teams know what's at stake right now Great pass along the baseline the blocking foul called on Shao counted for Correa uh, Leilani Correa read that That bounces down Yeah, they were right there against Alabama and go back and look at that game tape as I'm sure that they have over and over and over again. Defensively, you got to pick up that intensity, but 
You're at home. You want to win for your senior too. Wonderful ball movement transition offense. It's a little bit of a one-two-two zone. Bostic to Shaw and Shaw rims it in. Sydney Shaw has been really good the last couple of games. Good block right there. So she gets the point. Protecting the basketball after coming down with the rebound is able to get it away. A lot of bodies around the basketball. It's a player who has helped to be a glue piece for Johnny Harris's program. Every single game this season, she, it's fun to watch. Even if her numbers, like if she hasn't scored in double digits, it's her overall impact, her overall game, and you can tell she is the glue for this Auburn Tiger team. The Tigers will take it the full length of the court as Marshawn Bostic trying to tee through, kicks it out, and Taylor Collins is able to knock down the short mid-range jumper. And I like Collins stepped into that with so much confidence. When you talk about winning championship, what Coach Harris had been a part of, she knows what defense does to your team. And that was the first thing when she got in. I remember talking to her, her first year, really getting the players to buy into her defensive philosophy. Obviously, second year, you move players in, some players leave, some players go, trying to get stronger. But it's her senior year. I'm like, you got to go out with a bang and want to play overseas. So definitely trying to build her. Believe. The Tigers in the bonus and Collins. I really like so funny. the intensity that both teams are playing mm -hmm. with right now. The pace of the game, while it's up and down, it's also been slowed down at times to half court offense. Knocking down one of two. Well, understanding Florida could move up as high as a nine seed as the end one for Andy Kendrick. Celia Sumbang is whistle for Auburn inbounds it underneath. Scott Grayson fell down for a second, popped back up. Sydney Shaw, who's knocked down a three already. Pulling up from the free throw line, no good. Correa comes up with the board, and Florida can hold for the final shot of the quarter. Like they're going to try to find the best shot. Nice five-point lead. Rim ball, yes! Bernie Rimdahl with a great drive to the basket. That shot won't go, but 16 of the 22 points for the Florida Gators. And Zach Tech Arena with a win. Oh yeah, Zippy Broughton, two, two points, and they don't want to go home without a, a win. This is your last game, the last time they'll ever play on this floor. You want to go out with a bang. And an awkward fall as Matharu with the take to the basket. She got rolled up interestingly. As Sydney Shaw steps over, gets that charge. Is way underneath there. She rolled up, but she's all right. It's Matharu who picks up the first foul, the offensive foul, and it's. Auburn basketball. Bostic with the take all the way. She had her head downhill and finished it off. Well, Florida's done a great job in their press and forcing Auburn in some bad shots or, and or turnovers. And Bostic did a great job of keeping the ball and going until they stop it. Nice recognition and pass from Broughton to Faith Duke. When you're trying to find that win, Defense is where you start. In the corner for a three, and Scott Grayson knocks down her second triple. But it has 18 points in the paint compared to Auburn four. Tracking down that rebound, Eddings brings it across half court. And then settles into their offense. Back to Marshawn Bostic. Bostic once more. And right now you just see the speed with which she takes off with, and she is just zooming by. I think for Auburn, you do have to settle down. You know, Florida, the emotions are always high on senior night. Whenever you have the home team, they do the celebration. The seniors are going to come out. They're going to be ready to play. And the team doesn't want to lose for your seniors. So 
Gators came out hot. Bostic coming out hot to her. <laughs> As she goes, this is her third layup in that position because you're also worried about a collision and potentially an injury going into SEC conference. Gray already with five points off the bench trying to add to that total. You think about just Correa and what she's been able to accomplish. We talked about fourth overall in scoring in the SEC, number one during conference play. That's three-point percentage during SEC play as well. And she's just grown in confidence, and it's extended to her teammates. They know what they can expect. I just think when they play together, when they drive and kick and drive and kick, they're such a good team to watch. Shot clock winding down, and Correa steps in, intercepts the pass. She's running on the break and the finish. Defense leads to offense, and that is what you see. Nice drive, nice pass. Bostic to Scott. Florida has been able to stay with him and really done a great job on the defensive end. And that one goes off the fingertips of Maya Mingo Young, who can do just a little bit of everything for Auburn. Flirted with the triple-double, had eight rebounds, seven assists, and six points in their last game. The assist is completed there as Taylor Collins makes the bucket. And then right there, stepping in is Eddings. The steal pulls up, and yes, with full confidence in transition. Second best team in the league in terms of steals are the Auburn Tigers. Right now, it's up to give them a temporary lead. Correa for three off the mark. Scott coming up with the board. That's Savannah Scott. Got a freshman of the week honors earlier in the season. You know what she's able to do. And Cowan down low with the good finish. The thought rule off the screen. Great look. Correa has done a good job on the board. Oh, man. Yes, she has. Oh, man. Talk about some of those shots. That was one of them right there for Leilani Correa. Oh, man. But excellent observation because, yes, we know that she can put up points, but she is also rushed to the board. She's got five rebounds so far on this one. Uh, staying active, doing whatever it takes to get this win. And Hard to guard when you go for the board and not just a steady player. Savannah Scott missed the first one. But sticking with it and puts it back in. Kendrick trying to take Scott off the dribble. Scott now with two fouls. And she'll stay in the game. This featured matchup is Vanderbilt squaring off against number 16, Kentucky, at Rupp Arena at 9 Eastern. How about the Cats avoiding the upset of 69% from the floor in the second? Rims off, and again, another rebound, half a dozen now for Correa. Alvin right now shooting 56% in the game. That one popped out. Here's Mingo Young. Eddings, good look from the corner. Yes, man. Layla Reynolds hit the deck down low, and I don't know how McKenna Eddings get, got that wide open. Dude, looking, sizing Ooh, up. Great face, dude. And she's smiling, I like that. That was a great move, face, dude. Miguel Young, the floor general trying to Chair, where to go? Got to get moving. About four seconds of the differential shot clock. Game clock. Got to get it up. And a shot clock violation. Quickly in to Zippy. 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Make it 0 for 8. But it's a three-point ball game going into the locker room. The way Auburn has shot the basketball, which helps to give them the slight advantage. But we mentioned how Florida attacked the paint during that first half. And 22 points in the paint for the Gators. Uh, first play right there. That's unfortunate. Honestly, Scott Grayson. We talked about the physical nature of this game if you're just tuning in, but also we've seen some hard falls as well, Tamika. 
Another one on that take there as Zippy brought the slow to get up. Jemaya Mingo Young bringing it back the other way. A 5-4 advantage temporarily for the Auburn Tigers. Sidney Shaw, who knocked down a couple of triples in that first half, decides to take it to the hoop and finishes it off. I love it. Attack the basket, get those points in the paint. Coming right back. Via Mathari will take it right back at Shaw. Shaw on the inbound. Looking, looking. And up ahead and stolen away by Aaliyah Matharu. Go get it, ma'am. Yes, and finish. You Cannot. talked about she was quiet in that first yes. half. Now they may have awakened the little girl. Awakened the beast. Yeah. <laughs> well, the top yeah. score is have to, You have to be aggr aggressive on the offensive end. Aaliyah Matharu can sometimes look like she's not engaged, but always engaged in going after the ball. That's for three. Duth coming up with the rebound and then some contact, and they're going to say it's last touched and out of bounds on Duke. Milton's been really aggressive on the board. Great job, Collins, coming around off that screen. But we've been impressed overall, Tamika, just about the defense that we have seen here today. We talked about it would be a low-scoring game, but both teams have brought their A-game on the defensive end, and trying to up the ante in pressure. That's right. You want to make it hard for them. You want to make, they're not going to get an easy catch. Honestly, Scott Grayson got open for a couple of looks earlier on, but trying to figure out a way to keep her from getting it. And right away, the ball goes right back to him. We see Scott Grayson now in double figures and out of bounds for Florida. They stunned and upset the national champions. Last four in that bracketology, but their net ranking currently at 46. What does a win here do for them today? Besides all of that, confidence. And especially going against a team like this, then you get an opportunity, hopefully, to make a run, get a higher seating, and then you get a chance to rest and prepare for the NCAA tournament. Cool. Johnny Harris, who's been a part of a many NCAA tournaments, remember was a part of that staff with Gary Blair at Texas a and when they won the national championship back in 2011. Biggest lead of the game now for the Tigers here. Batharu with a great look, won't fall. Scott Grayson collects the board, stolen away, and Matharu will go to the free throw line. Great steal getting her to the free throw line. Well, next Sunday, right here on the SEC Network, game of the day, number 11, Alabama. Oh, they sitting in that 2 3 zone trying to make it hard, and Leilani Correa. She was just anticipating that one all the way, and we've seen that a couple of times today how Leilani Correa has stolen the way, led the break, and finished it off. That's going to be 16 turnovers for Auburn. Great contestant challenge there from Kindred. Hard fall from Scott Grayson. An improved presence here in Florida. One of those experienced guards for Kelly Ray Finley. Uh, it's her second season here, and it's been fun watching even for her as she continued to get better. Last year, you know, she averaged 11.8 points per game, so she went from 11.8 to 17.7 in a matter of a season. Obviously, we have other players that have come. Leah Matharu here last year. She had to sit out the transfer for rules and senior out of Washington, D.C., who has been kind of a double digit guaranteed score for the Gators. She leads them in that category, but the assertiveness, the aggressiveness that she's brought to the court, just a really great competitor. Gators, perfect from the charity stripe, 14 of 14 from the line today as Matharu knocks down a couple. Marshawn Bostic. Junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, front ends that one. Attack that she has in the offensive, and she just brings a high level of energy to this Tiger team. Well, you gotta guard her. 
and she's a different look than Jemaya Mingo Young. Maria Matharu <laughs> continues to work. <laughs> and, I mean, scissor like as yeah. Matharu was not going to be denied. And then a collision there with Eddings. Forty-eight, forty-six. From exact tech arena, Steven O'Connell sitting over here in Gainesville. For the Gators, we close out with the win here of the SEC season. Win at home oh, as Korea. Yeah. We'll go all access with Texas A&M women's program. You'll get never before seen footage. We talk about the improvement that we've seen. For this Auburn team under Johnny Harris, how about Joni Taylor, the job she's done at Texas A&M. You know, Christy Curry has her group in position to potentially get a double bye. Today is an important day for all SEC teams. Mm -hmm. This went stolen away by Bostick, and the speedy Matharu tried to catch up to her. She fouled her from behind. Tournament time, as we all know, anything can happen. And... That's been the fun part. You and I were just talking. I said, you know, I, I, as a fan and a spectator and commentator, watching the game and it coming down to the last day the way that it has, step into a new role, and you're ready to play. Off the miss, there's Jariah Warren on cleanup duty. And you think about just Camille Cardozo and the year that she's put together, obviously. You're going to get one. Number 23 is the player that you're going to look at, and Bostic takes it right in. And you go back to January 4th, where she had a season-high 17 points against the Tennessee Lady Vols. My question earlier was for, for Auburn, you have one player that's double digits, and that's honestly Scott Grayson. How do you get somebody else that can be a more consistent scorer They've had players in and out, you know. It's been a lot of highs and lows. Every single night, you don't know what you're going to get from certain players. And I think that's probably the growth area. Like at Auburn, is how do they get more consistency? First miss of the day for Faith Dude, who we mentioned at the half is a perfect 4-4 four -four from the floor on this senior day. But yes, who is going to be that consistent score? Great pass from Scott Grayson down to Savannah Scott. And it's about time that, that, that they've seen this. That Auburn off that pick and roll has had plenty of opportunity where players have been wide open underneath the basket. With Zippy Broughton at the line senior from Wetumpka, Alabama. Talk about how great she was from beyond the arc. And one of those seniors we mentioned. What I like, though, is the smile. Being back on the court and the energy that she brings to the team. So, I talked to Coach Kelly Ray Finley. One of the things she says, like, I don't know how I'm going to replace that. And I don't think she is a player you replace. I think you find other players that can add pieces of what Zippy has brought to this program. The defense there for Marshawn Bostic coming up with the steal. Tambani just leaves it short. But we have said, this is an aggressive game. Both teams don't want to go out with a loss. So you're pulling everything you possibly have out to try to come out with that W. Sabane, a junior from Mozambique. It's been pretty evenly matched in the scoring column for both teams. Bertie Rindahl with a great look from three. Can't get it to go. Great rebound. Savannah Scott surrounded by three players. And on the break. Bertie Rindahl is the Gators three-point shooter, but as a whole for the Gators, they are 0 for 11. And great job, Leilani Perea. Heading on the floor. There's a whole lot of want out here on this court. And we're seeing put that on display. Eddings for three! Switch it down! There is a fight, a hunger, competitiveness that you're seeing here on this final day of the regular season. And this is just the appetizer. Still a lot <laughs> more basketball to be played. We mentioned Tennessee, South Carolina in action.
Well, well you just you, you look to obviously you had LSU, the defending national champions, right? You, you knew South Carolina once you saw the ball get rolling for them. But how about Ole Miss in the job that they've done? How about Shea Ralph and Vanderbilt? Kelly Harper's group in Knoxville trying to hold tight to that fourth spot. To get that double by. Sydney Shaw got it. Last shot right here. Florida gonna hold it. Seven points now for Sydney Shaw. A ten-point advantage here for the Tigers. Still unable to knock down a three, but. Layla Reynolds able to track down the offensive board before the end of the quarter. No good. A couple of good looks at the tips for the Florida Gators just wouldn't go. That's the reality. Yeah. Yes, you want to stay at seven for Auburn. They want to stay at seven. They have to win this game. However, Florida is not going to give up without a fight. And a 10-point ball game still a very easy margin or a very manageable margin. Auburn normally shoots 40.2% for the game. Right now, they are shooting 57% for the game. So when you look at that in yourself, Florida obviously is when they started out hot. The push off back the other way and the ball don't lie as the push off, that's the fourth personal foul. Possession prior too could have went either way. That could have been her fourth foul. Otaru leaves it short. Saved by Kendrick. And bucket for Reynolds. Now that's going to be Layla Reynolds. That's her first two points for the game. Good to see her battling down low. And we were mentioning during the break, Caitlin Duhon available. She's banged up for Auburn here on the break. Up ahead with Curtis. Oh, yes! How much do you feel all of this? You don't necessarily feel maybe all of it in the moment because there's some adrenaline kicking in, but afterward, how much do you feel it? Uh, hot tub, cold tub, <laughs> ice bath, or whatever it takes, then, you know, great thing for both teams. The SEC conference will start but it won't start till Wednesday. Get that by for Auburn. Chance to wait till the third day to play. Not necessarily traveling. Ooh, well, good looks there and again. Now that's wow. So they'll get the free throw, then they'll get the ball back. That could change the flow of the game, they'll pass. One more upcoming for Shaw. Uh, just like that, you'll see Auburn up now by six. And, you know, best case scenario, they hit a three. Now they're up by nine. But automatically changing the trajectory of the game. Those were the first points of the quarter for Auburn on the free throw line. Just three and a half minutes gone by. The Tigers trying to win this one, lock up the seventh seed in the SEC tournament next week, but also add to their case for the NCAA tournament, trying to make it the first time in five years. Correa with three blue jerseys around her is still able to finish it off. Smart move by Leilani Correa. Look at this. She sees Sydney Shaw come over. She alters herself in the air. You see Shaw trying to move her body over to get that charge, but that's going to be called a block. Knocked her by those three blue jerseys converging in. And right now. Honestly, Scott Grayson, all she can do is watch on. Remember, she's the leading scorer for the Tigers, the lone player in double figures on average for the season. You gotta be careful, you can't put her in this game early, too early. 
Marshawn Bostic, who has played well today, 13 points. She's going to add to that total now with 15. Rhea, who has been hot three games straight with 20 points or more. And again, her ability to get to the free throw line. Correa slipped and goes back door and gets herself to the free throw line. 22 points, 10 boards for the senior. Having other scorers out there is definitely a benefit. Batharu thought about it for three, and that has just not been the favorable distance for the Gators here this afternoon. The mishandler of the ball, and Matharu is there, Johnny, on the spot. And Matharu just hanging out, because that's what she does, hanging out, able to get the ball. They are cutting in on this lead. And she has picked up 11 of her 17 points from the line today. And again, all coming alive here in the second half. Marshawn Bostic, who has found success all game long doing just that. Going hard to the basket. Well, thought about it. Matharu with the ball in her hands, having to operate with single digits on the shot clock. The take inside the move a little round. And another whistle. And you have players trying to fill in roles that honestly Scott Grayson normally fills. She can do it, and it's easy for her to do it, but it's just her presence on the floor that calms this Tiger team down. That one rattles home. Keep the same mentality. Honestly, Scott Grayson down the floor, but if anything, you got to... I'd be attacking her. That tip to Scott. That's been there some time today. And, <laughs> and look, when they take advantage of it, it looks pretty in its it, execution. Great Savannah Scott. Great finish at the basket. With maybe a little bit of contact. Still a one possession ball game. Under two minutes to go here from Gainesville. Stolen away by McKenna Eddings. Marshawn Bostic up ahead to a sprinting Addison Scott Grayson. Extends the lead out now to five. What a definitely got to call a timeout. What you can do is focus on right where you are right now in this moment. You got a minute and 29 seconds left. A Florida Gator team that is not going to give up. Down by five at home. And Auburn trying to get one on the road. But Tharu and Correa have been great, but that one partially deflected on the attempt. Auburn going to take their time, and Florida's got to initiate some type of defense. Auburn searching for its first 500 finish in SEC play since they last went to the tournament in 2019. They could get to the charity stripe. They got to take advantage and move quickly for sure. Nice recognition and able to corral the basketball is Jariah Warren. And out of that review, they score quickly. But you want to go for that steal in this one. They play straight up defense. Try to force a turnover. Grayson He's dribbling it down. Nine and counting on the shot clock. Move is made to the hoop and the hard foul. But wow, there was a lot of ball there as well from Jariah, Jariah Warren. See right here. A bit with the body. Honestly, yeah. Scott Grayson runs in the face, dude. Two for two at the line today. Great players step up and make great plays down the stretch. She ended up having to be on the bench for longer than she would have liked with the four fouls, but then she come back in has really calmed the team down. 50 free throws we've seen in this game. Timeout taken on the floor. 
Correa on the inbound, looking for Rimdahl, gets it in to Matharu, who makes a hustle to the basket, lot of contact, rolls around and one! The hoop and the horn! They are coming at you, so you've got to protect the ball. Free throw knocked down, one point ball game. Inbound the basketball and quickly Zippy Broughton is there to foul Marshawn Bostic. Coming in, Auburn was 71% from the free throw line. They're just above their season average today. Hitting 16 of 21 from the line. And Bostic calmly knocks down the first. 18 points and nine assists for the junior. Misses the second. And Florida calls a timeout on senior day. They've got to get it in. No timeouts to work with. Over to Matharu, who drives the take. And the charge! Oh! The charge called against Matharu. The offensive foul. Yes. And she coming in. And that was Taylor Collins who stood there, sacrificed her body. A winning play from the senior. And quickly fouling Honesty Scott Grayson. Whoa. And Aaliyah Matharu with that offensive foul is fouled out for the game with 22 points. Was held scoreless in that first half, and then all of a sudden, just lit up here in the final two quarters. 14 for 15 from the free throw line from Matharu. But going back, honestly, Scott Grayson knocked down the first. This is going to give her 16 points. But since she's been on the floor, this Auburn team just looks different. And this one could seal it right here. Can still get a shot up. Got to get it up the floor. An opportunity they to top three. for Florida. Zippy Broad has it blocked by Odyssey Scott Grayson. Ball game. Wow. What a game. 